How is it going guys? Luke here and welcome back with some more Pot Limit Omar content. We are back playing some Pot Limit Omar. I recently started, played a couple of hands and uh, as you can see right away we're flopping top set in a 3 bet pot. Uh, generally a situation where you want to call but I think this player is never going to fold anymore versus shove so I'm just going to get it in. And he is not folding. Let's see if we can hold. We take it down right away in nice pot. And uh, yeah, let's get going, guys. Uh, if you guys like the content, as usual, make sure to give the video a thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you want to see more of me playing some PLO content, live games, and also some pot limit on my strategy, of course. And also, if you have any questions, use the comment section below. As usual, I'm happy to share my thoughts with all of you. I have two tables open at the moment, waiting for a seat on the other tables. We are currently playing on iPoker. I also have my HUD available, as you can see. We got some data on some of the opponents, which is always nice. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get going. Hope you're doing well, guys. Let me know if you're also playing these stakes. PLO 50, for example. Uh, what is your stake that you're playing? Happy to learn more about it. If you play, for example, lower stakes or higher stakes, like, let me know. And I'm also happy to jump into some different games if you guys are interested in that, of course. So feel free to give me some feedback on that. Very excited to play some poker again recently. Uh, didn't play that much um, last month. Definitely want to get back. Playing some more in April. Let's see if there are other tables available actually. If you play re regular tables then definitely make sure to Keep an eye out for the lobby, I would say. Uh, there we go. Um, new table on the bottom right. Oh, actually, hold on. Better move my table. Sorry for that. This would do it. Uh, face a min raise on table number two. Uh, this player plays a lot of hands. I think we can call or three bet really. I think three betting is completely fine. Like look at the stats. 85 VPIP. My double paired queens are definitely ahead of his range. So let's. Get some more money in a side board pretty good for my range um i think we still want to go ahead and bet um close to full range maybe even full range especially against this opponent obviously if we get cold it's not a great spot uh, so we're gonna check now um we can of course easily have an ace uh checking Got some blockers to the straight, but against this sizing, I don't really think we want to do anything. So I'm going to fold. Here we did call an open raise. Flop goes check, check. We turn the nuts and I'm going to pot it. Draw heavy board. We also have some backup. We face the min. 
pretty bad. Uh, we're just gonna call. Not necessarily a situation where we want to get in more money. Too much money for you, Fop. Uh, we face, face a squeeze now. Okay, okay. Interesting, interesting, guys. I would say we're going to fold. My hand is just a little bit too disconnected. And I think this... Look at this. He has aces, actually. <laughs> Funny spot. Look at this. What is he doing? The worth attack there. Worth big, big attack. Um. In the meantime, we three bats. King I board. We got an over pair. Got our back door in the flush draw. I think we're just gonna pot it. And folding a straight on another table on a monotone board against a very large sizing. Uh, you guys actually missed it. So let me quickly bring that one back in. You guys can actually see what happened. I think this is fine the way I played it. Um, not entirely sure about turn, but uh, let me know what you guys think. So we three bet, very standard. We flop a straight on a monotone board. We check back. Which I think is fine, really. Um, we could bet, but without a club, I think checking is standard. And then he almost pots on the turn. Um, which I'm not sure what to think of, really. So, I ended up folding. Pretty nice hand on table number four. In the meantime, King Jack 10 10 double. We flop. Middle set and a top set blocker, so we're gonna bet. Against someone that seems to be pretty interesting. So we, f so we block top set. Um, I think we can call and then stack off on like a non-spade i think we can also get it in now and then against the combo draw we are sort of flipping most likely i think i'm actually gonna call decent decent turn guys decent turn wadi If he bets, he should probably use a smaller sizing. Something like this is fine. He could also go even smaller, like 15 or 20. But I like this bet from his end, in a sense, if he bets. Uh, we're going to call. I mean, if he bets, he is very likely holding king king. He has 4-4. Four, four. Nice. Uh, yeah. Pretty much a cooler for him, obviously. Let me see. So, deuce is 4-4. Four, four. Check race is completely fine. Like, I wonder what I should do, really. Oh, wait. You don't see it anymore. Could be interesting to look into. I don't really want to do that too much. I just want to play some poker. I just want to play some PLM, guys. <clears throat> um, I think I got kicked off this table or did I? No, I wasn't on there. Um... I actually watched a video yesterday uh, on YouTube from Fader Holtz. Uh, obviously one of the best in the game. Uh, not necessarily Pot Limit Oma, but poker in general, of course. And um, the video was titled whether you can still... I'm not exactly sure what the title was actually. It was like, is it still possible to make money in poker? Something along those lines these days. Like, can you still make money in poker? 
and we shared a couple of interesting pointers i would say um the main conclusion was that yes you can still make money in poker there's a lot of opportunities still out there his belief was that the games have changed over the last couple of years but not as much as he would have thought uh, the games are changed a lot he said at the very highest stakes but especially in the mid and lower stakes like it's, it's not necessarily that different at least in his opinion um but basically he shared like three pointers that he believes are extremely important for people who want to become successful playing poker and let me actually see here we're gonna check so he said that the first pointer that is extremely important if you want to become successful in poker and he basically shares like not exactly how to say it like yeah so three pointers he mentioned that are extremely important if you want to become successful playing poker um which are first of all you have to invest enough time into it uh let me see actually so here he checks we are going to Let's check, my hand is already weak. I think people over check fold in general, so I was considering betting, but this one's probably a little bit too much. Anyway, he says like investing enough time is probably one of the most important assets to become successful. Like a lot of people, they struggle to find enough time to study, find enough time to play, not make enough volume. All that stuff is uh, extremely important when you go wanna become successful, like you really have to go all in basically like you have to say no to a lot of things in your life uh, you cannot do it all if you want to become a successful poker player if you want to make money if you want to make a living out of playing poker you have to treat it as your main priority basically everything or a lot of things have to you have to say no to a lot of things basically in order for it to work and i think that's definitely one important takeaway like i see and hear a lot of people also students of myself that yes they do spend time on poker but they also want to do a lot of other things in life uh, so yeah secondly he said that um uh, i think it was actually third on the list let me think uh, here against this player, let's just come in for a free bet again. You can also call. Uh, he said, what was the number two on the list? Um, he talks, first of all, number three on the list, he was talking about game selection. So you have to play the right games, play on the right times, play on the moments where your win rate is the biggest. And where you give yourself the best shot at making the most amount of money. And that means sometimes you have to play on times where it's not that convenient, for example, for, example, for yourself. So late at night or very early in the morning. And also you have to maybe play on sites where that aren't necessarily poker stars. Uh, we're going to check back flop and now we're going to fold. and you have to think creatively basically about like where and when to play and i think a lot of people they look at this the nuts against like two pair and a nut push for like i think this is not a good play from his side also the preflop call is not good i'm actually gonna give him a different tag so it's not always best basically to play on your regular side to play to grind your hours there like there are probably better opportunities out there and i have to agree with him um so game selection secondly investing enough time uh on number the first one 
And then the pointer he mentioned secondly, basically, was you have to work on your fundamentals. Enough. You have to make sure that you have extremely strong fundamentals. Like that is super important. Great flop. Got a bad large. Yeah, fundamental. So what he means is like you have to have really strong pre-flop ranges, know exactly what hands to play from which positions. And then post-flop, you have to be aware of like the most important and common notes and then have a good strategy, strong heuristics for that, for those situations. Like you don't have to know it all, basically, but you have to know a good amount of spots really, really well and understand those uh, those situations to a point where you make the strategy somewhat easy for yourself but may have a really good strategy basically uh we're gonna fold this and i think that's definitely a good pointer like i see a lot of people also focusing too much on like the nitty-gritty things undervaluing pre-flop ranges undervaluing like basic um Interesting turn. Take it down. So really make sure that your fundamentals are good and just spend a ton of time on that basically. And I think that is also a good one because even though it's very cool to study river ranges and cool bluffs, it's probably way more valuable to just understand really well your seabed strategy in position, for example, in a single race pot. Like really understand that and what hands to double barrel. That's probably extremely valuable. Same for three bed pots. Three bad pots out of position, small blind versus button, for example. You really have to be super sharp there and understand well what you should do on what type of textures. What are your sizing? The better you know it, the more easy it is to execute. The less mental energy it will cost you to play when you play. And the more free mental space you have to make better decisions. So, I thought it was a cool one, um, so definitely worth checking out, I would say. Um, interesting spot, bottom left. We are coming in for the cold four bet, of course. Not a great board. Not a great board, I would say. Also because we don't really have much backup. Um, I'm going to check. Do I have a lot of two pair sets, combo draws on a board like this? And against a large sizing, I am going to just check fold. We could bet fold, I would say, but don't think that's too great actually so i like this anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this quick video playing some plo 50 again subscribe to the channel if you do enjoy this type of format let me know if you have questions below in the comment section and also Give the video a thumbs up if you do like this specific video. And if you want to learn more about Pathlight at Oma, of course, check out the link below in the description. Head over to plomastermind.com to dive deeper and learn even more about the great game. Okay, guys, over and out. This is Luke. See you in the next one.